all right uh, welcome back eh, in the second part of uh, this chapter we were looking at yeah, the various uh, components yeah, uh, of balance sheet yeah and the final part yeah i was about to discuss about this yeah the difference between current assets okay assets that will be converted to cash within one year and the current liabilities yeah the liabilities that will that will be repaid here yeah, within one year is what we call net working capital the difference yeah so current assets minus current liabilities will be net working capital and yeah? this is picked up again yeah? this is explained again in the next slide let's go to the next slide okay as you can see a net working capital is equals to current assets minus current liabilities yeah and this is positive when cash that will be received over the next 12 months exceeds yeah exceeds here means more than yeah then the cash that will be paid out okay cash that will be paid out will be current liabilities okay therefore when it is positive then uh, the net working capital is positive but it's possible that net working capital can be negative yeah if it is negative then the current liabilities exceeds the current assets yeah therefore it is negative Okay, so usually it is positive for a healthy firm, yeah? but some companies, okay, or some businesses sometimes have negative net working capital, yeah. That in itself does not mean uh, the company is in trouble, yeah. Okay, it may be a temporary uh, phenomenon, okay, it may be a temporary thing, or it can be a, a what do you call consistent, yeah, a thing in that particular firm, yeah. Some industries may have negative networking capital yeah so uh, which is rare but then it is not uh, the only measure that we use to see whether the company is healthy or otherwise yeah so you have to be careful about that yeah but usually this networking capital is positive in rare cases okay some healthy firms may have negative networking capital all right Okay, and we have seen liquidity before. I've explained this before. This is the ability to convert cash quickly, okay, without any significant loss in value. Yeah, so one is quick, how uh, quickly yeah you can convert the asset to cash. The other aspect is there must not be any significant loss in value. Yeah, when you have both this, then the asset is liquid. Yeah. So liquid firms are less likely to experience financial distress. Why? Because when they need to pay, the need to pay comes from usually yeah, current liabilities, right? You need to pay these obligations. Therefore, you will need current assets that you can quickly convert to cash yeah, in order to pay the current liabilities. Okay, so liquid firms will have a lot of current assets yeah, or adequate yeah, enough current assets. Okay, so they are less likely to experience financial distress because they have enough current assets to pay the current liabilities or to cover yeah, the current liabilities. But liquid assets, okay, this is the problem with uh, liquid assets. Yeah? A company may have a lot of liquid assets, but liquid assets typically earn lower return. Yeah? Uh, so um, one is in a business not only to uh, resolve financial distress, yeah, but also to uh, earn return yeah return here means make money yeah or remember the goal of financial management to create owners wealth yeah or to increase owners wealth to maximize owners wealth or to increase or maximize shareholders wealth this is called return yeah so uh, if you have lower return then you don't actually achieve that goal yeah so the idea is Okay, you want to uh, you want high return, but at the same time you want to reduce financial distress. Yeah, but there is a trade off. Yeah, trade off to find balance. Yeah, between liquid and illiquid assets. Yeah, as you will see in uh, this particular table here. Yeah, if you hold a lot of liquid assets, you have low risk. Okay, and which is positive. Yeah, this is a positive aspect. You have low risk. Okay, because you have enough uh, liquid assets to, co uh, to cover yeah, any uh, financial obligation yeah, that you need to pay. Yeah? So the risk is low. The risk of financial distress is low. But your return will also be low. Yeah? But this return being low is a negative aspect. 
Okay, that's uh, the trade off. Yeah, low risk, you have low return. Yeah, if you have uh, a lot of liquid assets. But if you hold on to illiquid assets, yeah, that means you have very low current assets, you have more fixed assets, for example. Okay, so your risk of financial distress will be high. Yeah, high risk of financial distress. So it's a negative, uh, negative thing. Yeah, it's not very really good to have high financial distress risk. But yeah, if you have illiquid assets, meaning you have a lot of fixed asset investment, okay, your return is likely to be high. Yeah, your return, yeah, your how much you earn, your cash flow generated from the fixed assets will be high. Yeah, which is a positive aspect. So there is a trade off. Yeah, high risk, you you are likely to have high return as well. Yeah. So you need to find a balance. Yeah? You should not have too much liquid assets at the same time not too much illiquid assets. Yeah? You must have a good mix. Okay, and one of the challenges to find what is that mix, the balance, yeah, which is the right balance. And this balance will depend on the nature of the business, different uh, sectors or different industries. Okay, as the firm grows, yeah, and uh, this uh, mix may change over time. Yeah, there are so many other uh, considerations yeah, that you need to uh, consider yeah, in order to find this balance. Yeah? We, we will look at some of these challenges a bit later. Okay, but right now you need to understand that liquid asset is not always good. Yeah? It's not all good. An illiquid asset is not all bad. Yeah? So <laughs> it has a trade-off between risk and return. Is that okay? Alright, yeah, we move on to the next slide now this is uh, an example yeah, of a balance sheet okay okay a typical balance sheet okay uh, this is taken from uh, um, an annual report yeah usually an annual report of a company will give the balance sheet over two years yeah? you can see there uh, you have two years yeah? 2017 and 2018 yeah two years Okay, but uh, it is adequate for a balance sheet to have the value for only one year. Yeah? So you don't have 2017, you have only this, it's still a balance sheet. Yeah? 2018 here and 2018 here, that is uh, adequate yeah? or enough for a balance sheet. But in this case, they give you two years so that you can compare the changes. Yeah? And this is quite useful, we need to look at the changes a bit later on. Yeah? So balance sheet, you have the assets on the left hand side, you have liabilities and owner's equity yeah, on the left hand side. This is a conventional format yeah, or conventional structure. Of course, now you have uh, various types of formats, yeah, but we will stick to the convention, the traditional format of the balance sheet yeah, because it's easier to explain. Yeah? That is why we have the term balance sheet, yeah? like two sides of a balance. Okay, and they should be equal value. You know, this, yeah, the value here and the value here, here must be the same yeah, because that will uh, comply yeah, with the balance sheet identity. Remember, assets must be equal to liabilities plus owner's equity. All right, yeah, so let's look at the uh, particular items yeah, in the balance sheet. Okay, let's look at the assets portion first. Remember, I said that the assets will be organized yeah, in the descending order of uh, liquidity assets. Yeah, liquidity of the assets. Yeah, so you have the most liquid assets on top, which is cash, and the least liquid assets yeah, will be net plant and equipment or fixed assets generally. Yeah. All right. So here we start with the most liquid. Yeah. Asset, asset that can be converted to cash. So you have cash itself here, yeah, cash. Okay, and you find that it is in millions of dollars. Yeah, usually when you say balance sheet, there will be a term, yeah, balance sheet of U.S. corporation as at. Okay, usually it says as at. Yeah, it's missing here. As at a particular date. Yeah, in the year. Yeah, it's not stated here. Usually a balance sheet because remember balance sheet is actually a snapshot. Okay, it is like a photo yeah, taken of the firm's financial position. Yeah, this describes the financial position of this firm, US Corporation, at a particular date. Okay, usually at the end of the financial year. Yeah, 
the end of the financial year is not necessarily the end of the calendar year yeah it can be any time yeah within that calendar year okay the financial year of a company may uh, uh, will be for one year but then the financial year end may fall at any date yeah for example 31st of march for example yeah not necessarily 31st of december or it can be uh, 31st of uh, july yeah uh, or it can be uh, uh, any other date yeah as long as usually at the end of a month okay and uh, the company can decide what is the financial year end for that particular company yeah or business all right so it must be at a particular date yeah and know that this is in millions of dollars yeah so if you take for 2018 it tells you here that the company had at the end of 2018 Okay, at the end of the financial year of 2018, the company had $221 million yeah, in terms of cash. Okay, this will be cash held by the company at hand okay, and also in the bank, yeah, cash balances in the bank. This includes yeah, cash uh, deposited in savings account and current account. Yeah. Okay, so this will be cash. Yeah. Okay, so in 2018, 17 it was 104 million in 2018 there's an increase to 221 million yeah all right now the second item is accounts receivable what is accounts receivable accounts receivable will be what the customer yeah owes the company or firm okay that means uh, here let's take this figure here 688 million dollars okay was sold to the company's customers, the U.S. corporation's customers, was already sold. Yeah, they have uh, sold to the customer, but they have yet to collect from the customer. The customer still owes the company six hundred eighty-eight million dollars. Yeah, that is what this tells you. Yeah, accounts receivable. This is what the company is yet to receive from its customers. Yeah. Then the third item is inventory. Okay, inventory or stock. Yeah, in Malaysia we call this stock as well, but the term inventory is now gaining uh, currency yeah, or popularity. Okay, and um, uh, inventory is used widely uh, throughout the world. Yeah, so this means okay, inventory would be uh, value of any item yeah at any stage of production or sale that the company uh, has yet to be sold to the customer. Okay, for example here, yeah, 555 million US dollars, okay, would be the inventory held by the company at the end of 2018, yeah. All right, it means that, okay, there are various types of inventory. We will uh, look at this a bit later on, yeah. Here it is aggregated, yeah, it is aggregated or it is, um, uh, the all the inventory items are not broken down here. Yeah? They have just aggregated, lumped them together into one item. Yeah. So here, inventory can be divided usually yeah, into three types of inventory, which will be raw material, okay, work in progress, okay, and the third one is finished goods. Yeah. These are all uh, the three types of inventory. Yeah. Okay. So this does not tell you what type of inventory. This uh, aggregate sum. It just tells you that the company had five hundred fifty-five million dollars worth of goods, yeah, that uh, were at various stages of production that were yet to be sold to the customer. Okay, that is what it means here. Yeah. All right, and the last item here for assets will be net plant and equipment. Yeah. So net plant and equipment uh, are fixed assets. So here you have one point seven billion. Yeah. Because this is a million, this is 1,709 uh, million, which translates to 1.7 billion, yeah, billion dollars. This is the amount of fixed assets that the company had at the end of 2018. Is that okay? So when you add all this, okay, you have a total for current assets, which is here, 1.5 billion, roughly. And you have another 1.7 billion, yeah of uh, fixed assets so your total assets when you add these two you have 3.2 billion roughly yeah 3.2 billion dollars that is the amount of total assets okay in the next video 
Okay, next clip here, yeah, we will look at the current liabilities. Yeah?